What's up guys welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Auto and today we're going to be working on this 84 El Camino. We're going to be installing some aftermarket horns. To get this project started we're going to need some terminals, a wire stripper, the horns which are right there and a fuse holder, a button and a relay. And to give you guys a real quick visual of what's going to happen with the wiring we got the car battery, we're going to grab the power, put it through the fuse and then that's going to be feeding power to the relay pin 86 and 30 and then 30 is gonna go to 87 which is then gonna give the power to the horns both horns the high and the low and then for the switch to control the circuit we're gonna grab a wire from the relay going into the vehicle through the momentary switch and then we're gonna find ground somewhere so that'll take it all the way back to the battery the horn right here has positive and negative but it doesn't matter which way it goes just as long as they're connected and the same thing goes for the switch the only thing that's really pin specific is the relay so the same process should apply for any vehicle if you're gonna install your own horn the only difference here would really be the location of the button that's up to you depending on your vehicle where you want to put it right so to get started we're gonna grab our power from the positive terminal on the battery but the hole in these ring terminals is a bit too small to go onto that bolt so we're gonna ream it out. So after reaming it right there, we can see that it fits right over the bolt nicely. Now we're gonna put on the fuse holder. We just gotta make sure to get some heat shrink over it and then put the terminal over the end and I can crimp it. Give it a nice tug to make sure that it's nice and tight and then put the heat shrink over and we can heat it up with the lighter. Now on the other side, just put a heat shrink and then we're going to put a butt connector. Twist the wire a little bit. Now to put the other wire, it's thinner than this wire coming over here. So we're going to turn it over on itself and then stick it into the connector. Then give it a good crimp and a nice tug to make sure that it is a good connection. And then just put the heat shrink and heat it up. Now that that's done, I'm going to put the fuse holder in there. Just Remember not to put on a fuse until the very end. Now the rest of the wire, we fished it through in front of the grill all the way over here to where we're gonna mount the horns on the driver's side. So up until now we got the po positive wire coming from the battery, going through the fuse in the fuse holder, which is not connected by the way. And then we need to grab this power wire and put it onto pin 86 and pin 30 of our relay. So in our kit we got the relay, this bolt, and the nut and the bolt just happens to fit this hole right here so that's where we're gonna mount the relay so right here I got the nut in the back of the bolt and I left it a little loose so we could do the wiring up here on the top so this right here is my hot wire and I just cut another piece and since I need two hot leads I just tied them together so I can put one terminal here and one terminal right there so now with the wires tied together we need the heat shrink over it then put the terminal and the crimp and then heat shrink that on. Now just do the same thing on the other lead. Okay, so now with the wires done and heat shrink, you wanna put the power on 86 and 30. Since I know that both horns are gonna be roughly this distance apart, cause they're gonna bolt right down the middle with one bolt, then I'm just gonna grab the wire, measure out the distance from here to here, and then from, from here to the relay so I know how much to cut. So here's where the power is gonna be coming out of the relay and then it's gonna be going to both horns. Now when you're heat shrinking these wires you wanna make sure that the heat shrink covers the terminal. That way it minimizes the risk of a short. So looking at this diagram you can see that the power goes in 30 and comes out 87 to both horns. So this part right here is gonna go on 87 and then these two right here to both horns. So now we're ready to install the horns. We got both the positive and the negative wires. So right here you can see these two are gonna be the positive going to the relay. And then these two over here are gonna be the ground. And this is gonna ground right onto the same bolt that's gonna be holding both of the horns together. So right there we got the horns installed where the old ones used to be, both of them. And then the ground for both horns is grabbing onto the same bolt that they're mounted onto. And then the positive is right here. The positive is gonna go over here to pin 87 on the relay. One thing to note when you're installing the horn is that you always want the open end to face down on both of the horns. 
and that's just to reduce the likelihood of water getting into the horns if it ever were to rain or water's coming down the fender. So there you go on a relay we've got three of the four wires done. Now the only thing left to wire is the button. That's going to be a ground wire. It's going to go from here all the way this way down through the firewall and into the cab. Looking at our diagram here we've got the positive wire. We have already did the fuse and it's going to the relay which is already wired. We just did the 87 going to the horn and we also did the ground going to that bolt. So the only one left to do is the wire coming out from pin 85 over to our switch and from the switch to our ground. So right here on the relay this is our this is our ground cable for the control circuit. I got it going back through there back under here and it goes right behind the firewall right there. Right there you can see daylight and the wire is coming through. So the wire is going to go over the steering column back around along those wires over here where the aftermarket gauges are at and then we're going to take and make a little hole right here on the shifter skirt so we can add our switch on the shifter cover. So here's our shifter cover and our button. So I'm just going to stick it in here. This is the wire coming from the relay and this is going to go crimped on to the button. So here's the bottom of the switch. We just put our lock ring over it all the way down and then our little nut. Okay so now we're ready to put everything together. So this is the wire coming from the relay again. Here's the hole that we made into the skirt. So we pass the wire through and then fish it out on this end. And now I'm going to put the skirt back on. Right there, hole made in the skirt. And I'm going to add the terminals. Pinch that one and do the same thing on the next one. And then heat up the heat shrink. So on this wire coming from the relay we're going to put a spade terminal. If ever we need to take off that cover for any reason you can just quickly disconnect it. As for the ground you can grab the ground from any bolt around the area. We got this uh, ground right here from the aftermarket gauges. So this right here is the voltmeter so you got power and ground right there too. And it's just convenient for us to get it from there so I'm going to grab the ground from right there. So now we just got to put the cover and for the two but for the two wires on the button it doesn't matter which way they go because they're both grounds. Just one of them's coming from the relay and the other one's going out to the ground on the voltmeter. So we just gotta stick it up over, pass it through, and then we connect both of the grounds right there. I'm just gonna pass them in under so they're out of the way. So for that last ground cable for the switch, it's coming from the relay from pin 85. Then it goes through the firewall and then all the way up to my switch on the shifter cover. And then from the other side it comes through and then hooks up to that bolt on the other side of the voltmeter. And that's how it's getting its ground back to the battery. So now that the whole circuit is complete, we just stick a 10 amp fuse in there. And then finally before putting everything back together, we just got to make sure that it works. So now all we got to do is just put everything back together and we should be good. So there you go guys. This is a nice clean install. There's no wires hanging out anywhere or anything that really looks off. So I hope this helped you guys out and helped understand the horn circuit. This is basically how it's controlled in every car. Except in your modern vehicles you're going to have it right here on the steering wheel. And that's got a clock spring so no matter where you turn the steering wheel it's always going to have contact. If you were to do that with the wire right here. It would just get tangled up and twisted and eventually it would break. That's why they use a clock spring up here. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe and all those other goodies. Thank you.